side, hold the side. Look at me. Olivia. Where are the others going? walk for climate justice here in Central Davis where there are a lot of government agencies which I tend to think of as um, ways of accessing decision makers and the powers that be that that are helping us try to engage with the climate emergency and so we're going to be visiting about a half dozen of those learning something about what they're up to meeting some of those decision makers and also re, reawakening um, as, as the clutches of COVID uh, lessen a little bit and we can get out and about um, instead of all just distancing and sitting at home uh, suffering from the pandemic. So this is a bit of a reactivization or remobilization. Hey, here's, here's our, uh, our co-organizer, Juliet. I really hope that they take away that it's important for them as concerned citizens to, to stay as engaged as possible. That good to some good work is being done, but we need even more. And you know, the way we make that happen as citizens is to be present, be attend meetings, talk to your elected representatives, show up for these kinds of events, make it clear that you know, how you vote is going to be dependent on the, you know, the kind of actions that are taken or not taken. So it's really about encouraging people to be engaged and that there are many points of access to helping address this problem. We're pretty you have a nice, you have a nice outdoor space for us here. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Plus the sun came out of here. Yeah. We have with us uh, the superintendent of schools in Davis, uh, John Bowes, and we also have uh, Joe Denencio, who is the president of the school board. And they're going to talk to us a little bit about what Davis Joint Unified School District is doing with respect to the climate emergency. And I apologize, my mask on, it may be a little hard to hear, so I'll do my best to project. Um, so, again, I'm Joe Lindsay, and I am uh, president of the Davis Joint Unified School District School Board of Education. Um, you may know that uh, about 18 months ago, we passed a resolution, a call for action to address climate change. Uh, it was Resolution 4719 on June 20th of uh, uh, 2019. Um, and there was a great march um, that spring as well. Um, we had a wonderful conversation with many members of the community, especially members of our student body, who we're always glad to hear from. Um, and at that time, we committed to a number of steps that I'm glad to say we have begun to move forward with. One, Davis has always been a very positive, bike-friendly town, and we have continued to promote uh, efforts to enable our students and our staff to come to campus either on bike or by foot. Um, and Dr. Bose knows I'm a big aficionado with both. I try to get 25 to 30,000 steps a day. Wow. And, uh, and, uh, and I think so many of our community members are super pro walking and pro biking. Um, second thing we committed to was to focus on education, in particular on climate science and on environmental science in K through 12. And we're continuing to do that to make sure that is part of our curriculum. A third thing that we committed to was to move towards more energy efficient appliances and devices in all of our campuses. And I'm proud to tell you that we've been through a process of, I believe, removing all of our traditional lighting and now fully LED lighting in virtually all of our campuses and looking for replacing HVAC units and other, uh, other appliances that use electricity with energy efficient ones. 
And then the last one, many of you are well aware that um, we want to make a push towards solar energy and sustainability for the district. And uh, a lot of community action around this two years ago. Um, we hired a firm, we've developed a plan for implementation of solar energy on virtually all of our campuses. In fact, I believe I propose the only one excluded is Fairfield, which is yep. a little bit challenging because it's a, effectively a two-room uh, schoolhouse um, in West Davis. But the plan is to deliver more than 80% of our power on each of our campuses using solar. And we're just about done with our plan, and uh, our goal is to begin implementing the actual construction of these later on this calendar year. Um, and many of you know we already have solar in a number of our sites, including Harper Junior High and at Data Center. So that's a little bit of overview of what's happened over the last roughly 18 or 20 months since last we were able to have a conversation with a group of students and community members about this. I'm just, I'm really happy that the city is going forward with their climate action plan. They're starting it now. Uh, there's a workshop on April 22nd at 6.30 on Zoom. Uh, so uh, I hope that people tune into that and give input and, and uh, get involved in our climate action plan. Yeah, I don't know if you have any questions or? Could you say a little more, um, Gloria, about how the the outreach is going to work on this um, for the updating for the, of the climate the climate what is it called the climate climate adaptation and action plan sure uh, yeah so there are some uh, there we're going to do the workshops uh, and this is the first of, of that set of workshops I'm not sure how many but I know that we've gotten really good at our outreach lately especially through the healthy Davis together. Uh, we've uh, really tried to reach out to groups that we don't typically reach out to and try to get them engaged in, in the work that we're doing. Um, there was, oh, uh, right now that we're uh, recruiting for commissions, is, has, it's really shown up there. So the, because our outreach is different than what it has been in the past, and we really wanted to diversify our commissions, and so we are seeing applications come through for the commissions that we haven't ever seen before. So the demographics of what we're getting on our commission applications are a lot different. So we're getting a lot of more UCD students, we're getting a lot more people of color, we're getting a lot more um, you know, varying ages of people that are coming through. And we think that that is because our outreach has changed. And so we're hoping that, you know, going forward with any of the community outreach that we do for, um, you know, any, any of the plans that, that we're putting together, that this will serve us well. What are we doing in climate change? And that's a, definitely a very important topic. And we have been on the vine here, I would say, not only climate change, but also climate smart agriculture. And that's the term that I do want to use. Um, we don't, as a federal agency, our role is to work with farmers, ranchers, and of course our owners in protecting the environment, protecting the natural resources, and providing conservation practices, not, not only to provide, uh, protect those resources, but also sustain, sustain them for the long haul. And we totally understand, based on the science, and I feel myself very proud of being a scientist, being an engineer, being a scientist, that we utilize our practices to do that. One of the main uh, practices that we're using or uh, focusing on is on soil health. Using soil health practices to, uh, to sequester carbon on the ground. Just giving you an example, for the last, uh, there was a study conducted by NRCS, between 2004 and 2018, looking at how many, how much uh, carbon is being sequestered on the ground, utilizing a uh, conservation practice. And we're very, very happy and actually very uh, proud of the results. That shows that our conservation practices, especially those that we utilize for soil health, utilize for soil health uh, and to sequester carbon and greenhouse gases, actually reduce 
the amount of carbon, or actually implemented carbon, incorporated carbon underground, and reduce the amount of uh, NOx, or uh, greenhouse gases, the equivalent, the equivalent to 79,000 vehicles a year being driven in and on the roads in California. And also reduce the carbon footprint, uh, or that equivalent to the carbon footprint of 39, over 39,000 Californians.